Okay, so welcome back to accounting. We were talking about uh, balance sheets uh, last time. So we'll continue our discussion on that. As you can see that I have uh, gone back to a slide where we gave an example of how a balance sheet looks like. So again, just to refresh your memory, a balance sheet has uh, a few um, characteristics, few traits. Number one, we look at the heading. The heading clearly states the name of the company or the business and clearly states that it is a balance sheet. And then of course the date and also take a look at the way it's structured. You've got assets on one side, you've got liabilities and equities on the other side. Assets always equal liabilities plus equities. And that would give you an understanding about the, uh, the most important accounting equation as well. So again, uh, this is a, a formal slide about how the balance sheet is set up. Uh, we just went over some of those features. We've also talked about what an asset is, what a liability is, and you can see from this uh, slide that uh, assets are uh, listed in the order of liquidity. Again, that's a refresher from last time. Some of the uh, most important assets as we may have talked about or hinted at were with regards to uh, cash, which is itself uh, is the most liquid asset. Uh, cash, when we talk about cash, we mean cash in the bank account. So cash and bank are used interchangeably. And then of course there's the AR. AR stands for accounts receivable. Now what kind of an asset this may be? This is for uh, basically a money that is owed to you. So in a business kind of a situation, not everything uh, uh, is traded or, or done on cash or on uh, debit cards. Usually a lot of these things are done as receivables, especially in larger businesses or larger amounts. So the client or the customer would promise to pay you within 10, 15, 20 or 30 days and that's for, for those 10, 15, 20, 30 days that amount is uh, owed to you and that means that it's an accounts receivable which means that you're expecting the customer to pay you. So it is an asset, it is the second most type of liquid asset uh, and it is something that you report at the time of your balance sheet. So accounts receivable is something that uh, basically as customers promise to pay you and then they, they actually pay you. So then you take it out of receivable. And then other customers promise to pay you and then they actually pay you. So it comes, uh, 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 amounts go into this account and amounts come out of this account. Accounts payable is the opposite of receivables, meaning that this is amounts that you owe others. So accounting is always a two-way street. You always have to think about uh, your perspective and the other business or other party's perspective. So if, if you have uh, something that is an account receivable to you, that means that uh, the other party uh, on their uh, balance sheet, you are an account payable, right? So that's how it works. For one party, it's an account receivable. For the other party, it's an accounts payable. Accounts payable usually are because of suppliers or vendors, and it may also be for uh, other things such as rent, uh, where you have to pay someone else. So just to cap off, you can take a look at how to prepare a balance sheet. You first look at writing the three-line statement heading, which we went over a few times now and you obviously write subheadings such as assets, liabilities, and owner's equity, uh, and then you total them up. Uh, step four, you can t look at uh, in a bit more detail where it says owner's equity. Owner's equity is basically the, is for the, is the difference between assets and liabilities, as you may remember from last time, but it also represents the value that the person who owns the business actually has in that business. So basically, the way it's written is, you write the name of the owner, comma, capital. So you may remember this from the exercises that we've been doing, and this is how it's written and showed on the balance sheet. So some of the uh, procedures or practices that I want to highlight here, uh, bookkeeping is what you're learning right now. So accounting is al always, obviously the next step to it. You may recall from our demo that accounting, or that we did a couple of days ago, that accounting requires a lot of professional judgment, a lot of communication, and bookkeeping is a lot of the, the legwork, a lot of the, the accounting journal entries and accounting uh, 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 <coughs> basic work that is being done. So some of the 
basic bookkeeping practices which we all tend to follow are listed on this, um, on this uh, slide. The most important here is to be neat and understand that the other party, someone else, a user, will be reading your financial statements or your accounting work. And this user can also be management or your own boss. So they need to understand how you're doing this. There needs to be a standard uh, way of doing things. Uh, use dollar signs um, where it's indicated. And of course, use single underline to subtotal and double underline to total. Nowadays with software, uh, this is not always uh, uh, followed. So what they do is, for example, they use a thin underline for subtotal and a thick underline for a, a total. So these are little things or improvements that technology has done for us, which is great. Um, and uh, moving on to some of the accounting standards, the, this slide and the next slide talks a bit about um, how, uh, sorry, uh, what are the accounting standards that accountants follow. So in Canada, there are two components of GAAP which are very important. GAAP, by the way, again stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. Very, very critical, very, very important as far as accountants or accounting is concerned. So in Canada, there are two components of GAAP. The first one is ASPE or ASPE. This, is, this stands for Accounting Standards for Private Enterprises. Basically, uh, this is for small companies or companies that are privately held. And we can talk about that later a bit. And this, there, there should be, uh, there's a theory out there that there should be less burden on the small businesses as far as accounting reporting is concerned. It's because most small companies uh, don't have large complex accounting transactions. Uh, an example might be pension plans. So small companies don't really offer pension plans, but they can, but they usually don't. So that's why they've got separate accounting standards. For larger companies, international companies especially, we must follow IFRS, I-F-R-S, which stand for International Financial Reporting Standards. So these standards are very, very comprehensive, very, very uh, lengthy and, and, and sometimes complicated, but that is for large businesses. The third type of uh, standard that we have to follow in Canada is the Income Tax Act. And this is where a lot of the rules for accounting are also defined as far as tax is concerned. So a lot of the businesses, a lot of individuals perform accounting work or accounting functions due to tax liabilities. And this is where we have to follow the Tax Act, the Income Tax Act. So again, I'm coming to the balance sheet presentation and how it looks like. Uh, these are some of the headings that we use within the balance sheet. You can clearly see that one component of it is, uh, uh, is, is um, uh, very much to do with assets. The other has to do with the, the equities and liabilities. So the assets are broken up into short term and long term. They can also be called current assets and fixed assets, but mostly now they're called short term and long term assets and uh, short-term liabilities and of course long-term liabilities and the last component is your owner's equity. Balance sheet is what we use, what we have always used uh, in Canada and we continue to use to represent or to uh, state the name of this uh, financial statement. However, under IFRS you have an option of calling it either a balance sheet or you can call it statement of financial position. So certain businesses uh, are choosing to call it statement of financial position, but it is the same financial statement. It is still the balance sheet. Lastly, today I'd like you to uh, get a brief intro into three different accounting principles. So accounting principles are really, really critical to understand. We are not going to cover more than 15 or 16 principles. It's just a matter of introducing these to you to, into this course. Uh, you may recall that we've, uh, in the exercises that we've done already, you have already applied some of these concepts. So the first one that you should look at, or the first one that I want to highlight, is the business entity concept. So basically, um, as far as a business is concerned, it is a separate entity. You must differentiate between business assets and liabilities and in your own assets and liabilities. And these need to be separated 
they need to be, uh, for if you're preparing a business balance sheet, only a business's assets and liabilities should appear on the business balance sheet. The next one is the going concern assumption. Basically, accountants and business owners operate on the assumption that the business will be in, uh, uh, will continue as normal in the future. So we are very uh, um, optimistic about this, which is great because otherwise accounting solutions can differ. And the last uh, uh, principle that I'd like to highlight is the cost principle. As we go along this course and the, in, the, in the grade 12 course, you will hear uh, that the cost principle has changed the way it does things, which is great. But at the same time, the cost principle as it is written in this slide is extremely critical for the for understanding of accounting as you're starting out to learn accounting. So basically, assets and liabilities are to be shown on the balance sheet using the original cost of purchase. So there are lots of assets that you may buy, such as a car, such as a furniture, such as your computers, uh, or even buildings. That may have uh, that may increase or decrease in value as time goes along. But you must show all of these assets uh, at the price that you bought them at on your balance sheet, the original price, because that is what you have an objective document. Your source document, your, your receipt, your uh, papers show a certain amount. That is what you need to put in. And we will, we will learn as the other procedures that go along with assets as we go along in this course. So, I just wanted to again briefly uh, uh, summarize what we did. Today we uh, looked at uh, some of the basic bookkeeping procedures, the accounting standards, that the three standards that we follow, how a balance sheet looks like, the difference between receivables and payables, uh, accounts receivables and accounts payables, and at the end we talked about three of the accounting principles uh, 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 that are extremely important. So I hope that uh, you will uh, listen to this uh, pr presentation in, uh, in the future as well a couple of times to refresh your memory and always refer back to your, um, uh, your notes. And uh, in the end, remember, ARTW, accounting rules the world. Thank you.